Fan Networking Podcast promotes business owners and business experts throughout the world. I'm Tom Riach, known as the king of networking, connecting people from my unique communication lab in Brazil. Today we talk with Brian Livingston, joining us from Charlton, South Carolina. Brian Livingston is founder of Be Living Enterprise and author of the book, The Habits of Squirrels. Brian stepped away from a career as an attorney to focus on marketing and publishing his novel. Brian is also an expert speaker on a variety of topics, outdoor activities, hiking, self-publishing process, the horrors of attempting to switch one's career. Brian, you have literally stepped outside and stayed there. What are the benefits and drawbacks of spending time outdoors, of taking long hikes? Yeah, so um, right off the bat, it's um, it's a great way to sort of get some perspective. You know, you spend, we all spend a lot of time in our workspace and our home space, and that starts to sort of feel like our entire world. And then when you go outdoors and spend a lot of time there, you are literally sort of changing your perspective, your vis- visual perspective, and just realizing there's more to the world. And then, um, you know, on another level, it's a great way to sort of wipe the slate clean. We're all sort of constantly accruing habits and routines, some of them good and necessary, some of them bad and unnecessary. Mm-hmm. And you go out and you spend a long time, you know, just in a tent or you know, just doing something different. When you come back to the world, all your old routines are sort of broken, and it gives you a chance after some reflection to sort of rebuild um, your routines, uh, ideally in a more useful way Mm -hmm. and, you know, more attuned to you being happiness. Uh, You find me. Sorry. How you were saying to bring fresh air into your brain. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, once you get caught in a routine, I mean, it could, you could do that forever. It's really hard to bring your head above water and sort of, regain that perspective um on the the drawbacks you know there's obviously a physical toll i mean there's health benefits to hiking more if you're doing the long hikes Mm -hmm. um it's probably a wash because you start really doing a lot of damage um (laughs) yeah because people tend uh, to overdo right yeah and then i mean it's it's tough to carry a pack up and down the mountains especially down the mountains um it really starts to wear on the knees and the ankles. So it sort of shortens their uh, shelf life. And, uh, you know, when you're doing a long hike or something, you're not really in touch with the rest of the world. It's sort of the drawback of, um, you know, the wiping the slate clean. It's, uh, it's the only thing you're doing at the time. And, uh, you know, it's hard to, to keep whatever else in your life is moving. So you sort of have to build your life to a point. Right. where you're comfortable to step away like that, which um, could be good or bad. And then, you know, on the long trails, be it the, uh, the Appalachian Trail or the other ones, um, you know, there's a lot of great things. Most mm-hmm. of it's wonderful. Um, there's a lot of people who are also out there sort of for the wrong reasons, maybe mm-hmm. just directly shirking responsibilities or just out there for the drugs or the drinking and the partying. Escaping. But, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, that's very enticing to be out there with them. And that could, that could be a lot of fun for a little while, <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, you're sort of out there to break habits and then you're out there falling into a bad one. I see. So, and yeah. anyway, what I, if I understand what you just said, uh, to the point, and I agree with you, we, we've been many people, we've been closed within four walls for a long time. And part of that is to not, not necessarily pushing the walls back, but opening the door and getting out once in a while now. And what people feel, I feel, you know, once you do get out now, yeah, that is invigorating. We've sort of gotten out of understanding what the fresh air was about, sunshine and trees and squirrels, as you're mentioning. <laughs> you know, how often does anybody think of a squirrel? Not often enough. And um, that's some of my favorite memories from through hiking the Appalachian Trail is just sort of the small interactions with animals. Mm-hmm. Be it squirrels or deer. And then you know, obviously you see a bear or a moose. It's a little more exciting. But just sort of watching uh, the little animals go about their day and trying to figure out what they're about. And it's about survival. And they have no interest in, you know, any problems that you have may, brought, may have brought out there with you. So it, it, it does help give, it a lot, give a lot of perspective. Well, The Habits of Squirrels, it's a novel, right? Yes. So uh, the, um, my book is The Habits of Squirrels. It's, um, it's heavily based on my through hike of the Appalachian Trail, but it's fully fictionalized. Fictional trail, fictional man. Uh, the Habits of Squirrels follows a retired uh, mailman mm-hmm. who is using a thru-hike of a long trail to do pretty much what we've talked about. So he's been in a routine for the mm-hmm. most of his adult life, and um, it's 
for, for better or worse. And he's just using that through hike to sort of wipe the slate clean right. to an extent. He's married, he has kids and um, wipe the slate clean and just sort of rebuild his, how he perceives the world and um, his framework for the rest of his life. Well, that's fantastic because uh, just to clarify for our audience, when we, we people sort of confusing, we say fiction, fiction is not necessarily fake. Correct. Yeah. Um, some fiction writers like to call it uh, exaggerated reality or highlighted <laughs> reality. I, I think my book would fall, or The Habits of the Squirrels would fall into that. Uh, a lot of it is very heavily based and corresponds to stuff on the Appalachian Trail. And I can see that because in real life, what does a mailman do? He used to anyway, walk around, they, they drive around, I guess. Uh, here in Brazil, they still walk quite a bit. And they do interact with different things. So I can see how you brought that together. And many times they don't get a chance to interact with, let's say, nature. Uh, they're interacting with a rural environment. And that cannot sometimes be very healthy. Yeah. And um, it definitely, his, uh, his career as a mailman definitely has several impacts on how he interacts with the trail. I think uh, there's a couple of scenes where he's literally trying to recreate the, uh, the side of his postal truck, the window. <laughs> and the through that. So he takes it out there and, um, you know, if uh, somebody tells him instead of going mailbox to mailbox, he's going tree to tree. So it, you know, he brings it with him. And then you know, ideally as the habits of squirrels progresses, um, you know, he cleanses himself of some of those habits and starts building new ones to help them move forward. Sounds exciting. So Brian, where can our audience find you and where can they find the book? Uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, you can get it on my website, brianlivingstonbooks.com. I'm on Instagram at, at Brian Livingston Books, on Twitter at Livingston Books, and then on Facebook, author Brian Livingston. Uh, beyond that, it's available pretty much anywhere you want to get books online. Amazon, IndieBound, Barnes & Noble. Um, I'll drive to you and hand it to you. <laughs> well, if you want to drive to Brazil, but where you want, you're always welcome, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love the excuse. So thanks again, Brian. Thanks for being part and sharing your exciting story. Yeah, thank you for having me on. And so for our guest, reminding you again, more information on Brian, on about Brian Livingston, it's B-R-I-A-N. The last name is L-I-V-I-N-G-S-T-O-N. Find him on LinkedIn and his site, brianlivingstonbooks.com. Instagram and Facebook, as he mentioned. Cafe Networking is brought to us by Focus MI Market Intelligence, an agricultural market research specialist in Brazil. More information on their website, focusmi.com. Thanks for listening. Until the next time here at Cafe and Networking Podcast. <music>